Hello SilverFam, and welcome to the Silverglades Shield Tutorial for shields and how to make them. Now this tutorial will be broken up into two parts. The first video will show you how to completely sculpt the shield, and the second video will show you how to paint it. We'll also reveal to you some tips and tricks of the trade to help beautify that shield as best it can be. Before we start, you will need the following. Cardboard! Wow. A, A roller! roller. Markers. Markers! Knives! Scissors! Foam! Contact, Contact adhesive! Shoe glue! Rotary, Rotary sander! Power file! Dremel! Heat gun! gun brush brush latex, latex! And, and acrylic, acrylic paint! paint. The very first step is design. It's important that the shield fall within the rules of your game. In our case, the shield needs to either fall within a 60 by 90 centimeter rectangle or a 70 centimeter diameter circle. Now, because the shield we've designed is a symmetrical one, the template we are using will be a half template as it allows us to mirror each side of the shield when we draw it out to make sure the shapes are perfectly symmetrical rather than trying to draw out one whole shape as a symmetrical shape, which is much more difficult. Now the foam we are using for this project are just ordinary EVA foam floor mats uh, because they have a decent level of rigidity while still being soft enough to be used safely for battle games and live action role playing games. Now we use the template by drawing out one side of the template and then flipping the template over along the straight line on the edge which gives us a uh, shape made with each symmetrical side. We then cut out that first piece of foam and using that first piece we've cut out, we use that as the template for the remaining pieces. Now because this shield needed to be at least three layers in order to have enough strength for its size, uh, we have used that first shape to cut out two additional layers. As these foam squares are only 55 by 55 centimeters, we have also sutured them together along the puzzle teeth, in this case using shoe fix glue, but you could also use quick grip or another contact adhesive. The reason for doing this is to make sure that you have a single piece that is the size of the layer required, and this will increase the overall strength of the shield. The next step is to sand the patterned side of the foam in order to make sure it's porous. The reason we're sanding it is not to smooth that down completely, but more to rough up that surface to expose some of the pores in the foam, which will allow the glue to properly infiltrate into the foam and adequately bond the layers together. Because if you skip this step and you don't sand those layers, you can end up with the glue not properly bonding, as it can't infiltrate into the pores of the foam, and then the foam won't glue properly, and you can have the risk of it popping apart. And once each of those layers has been prepared by sanding, the next step is to then use your contact cement, in this case Quick Grip, to glue those three layers together. Now because we wanted a curve for the shield, uh, I have used a plastic oil barrel to uh, give the shield a sort of template of shape. And you can see us in the video lining the uh, pieces up with one another along a central line that we've drawn on each piece to make sure that the top and the bottom are touching and aligned. And then we have curved the shields across the barrel. Now, if you don't have a barrel, you can of course curve by hand. That is what I did before I had it. Once these first two layers are glued, the third layer is then glued to them. Glue is added to both the two sandwich layers and the third layer. Once again, those are applied to one another once the glue is tacky. And the three layers glued together will hold that curved shape. In this video, you can also see that we've created a brace around the barrel to help hold the shape while the glue fully cures. Next, what we've done is using pieces of foam that have also been sanded on the pattern side, we have then cut out the front appliques and design pieces uh, to be glued on the front of the shield. Uh, we've made templates for each of those pieces. Uh, you can see us doing this with, of course, the rim of the shield. We've also done that, of course, with the main sigil design as well. It's important or useful to have uh, templates made for these pieces, and it's important to have them sanded uh, because you want them to properly stick to the front of the shield because it prevents them tearing off in combat. 
And then once each of those pieces has been cut out before it is glued on the front of the shield, you can see here that Evelyn is sanding them down and uh, smoothing them before they're glued on, fr on the front because this is the best time to do that as it's much easier to sand a flat shape than a curved shape. Now, once we had the front rim glued on, uh, we've next gone to the sides. As you'll notice here that there's some degree of overhanging on the sides. Uh, this is because the pieces are curved and it's just how curved shapes work. So the next step was to smooth these sides down. And then we have used a power file to smooth those edges down. This is because we will be gluing foam strips along the edge to make sure that the sides are smoother and nicer looking when the shield is done. Before the foam strips are added around the edge, check for places where the layers are peeling apart or where the glue hasn't bonded and re-glue or fill those gaps with either hot glue or Sikaflex. This is vital as the shield is most Next, from a sanded piece of foam, cut out the foam strips at least as wide as your shield is thick in this case, that meant four centimeter wide strips. And we've cut out five to cover the whole perimeter of the shield. You may need to cut out more or less depending on the size of the shield. Once those are cut out, it's also good practice to smooth down those edges as well. The foam strips are then glued around the edge one by one as a kind of rim. Here, we're drawing out where they will go on the edge and marking out their length. As the corners of Evelyn's shield were to be pointed, we're also having these strips meet at the corners of the shield rather than bending them around. If you wanted rounded corners though, wrapping the strips around the edge is the best way to go. The strips are applied using contact adhesive as before, being glued to the shield once the glue on both the edge of the shield and the foam strip is tacky. We are also applying glue to the ends of the strips where they meet one another to ensure the whole rim is connected. As you can see in this footage, I am taking care to make sure that the very edge of that strip is lined up with the front edge of the shield as this will make smoothing that seam out later much easier. Also because it's just better to have the front of the shield look nice because it means you put in less work to make the overall shield look good. And here you can see a demonstration of how having the strip bend around the corner of the shield or having it meet at the corner instead will create a different shape with either a more rounded or pointed edge. Once all the pieces are glued, make sure you trim off any overhang and smooth down the edges where they meet. It's important to make sure these rims are glued on as tightly as possible. However, if there are any gaps between where the shield and the edge meet, make sure those gaps are filled in with either hot glue or Sikaflex, and then smooth those uh, areas down where you have filled in those gaps. While the edge piece is cure, we then move to creating the sigil on the front of the shield. The pieces of the sigil were cut from a piece of foam sanded smoother than previously, as it's important that these smaller pieces glue on as snugly as possible. We've also re-ruled a line down the center of the shield and these pieces to help align the sigil pieces on the front. And before these pieces are glued on, the edges were also smoothed down, as you can see Evelyn doing with a rotary tool. After the sigil pieces are smoothed and ready, we've then aligned them on the front of the shield and drawn out their locations with a marker, as this will mean that when we are gluing them on, we are able to get it right the first time. And you can see here where we've drawn the location of those sigil pieces on the front. And with the gluing, it's important to take care as you really only get one shot to apply each piece. So it's valuable to remember that the shield is a curved shape and to make sure you're taking your time getting these pieces in the exact correct place. So having those pre-drawn locations has been a huge help here. Once those pieces are glued to the front, you can then see Evelyn using the power file to sand down any of the seams where pieces of foam have been glued to each other. This then allows for the filigree and other detail designs to be drawn on the front. So in this case, this is a pair of Eltharin runes from the High Elf language and some filigree of Evelyn's own design. 
So first I went in really lightly with the Dremel and then I went back in with slightly more pressure just to sort of deepen the groove. Um, I did practice on some, some scrap foam before I went in on any tricky bits. For the runes, I am using a craft knife rather than the Dremel. Here you can see I am cutting on an angle of either side of the design, so those cuts meet one another underneath it, and then peeling out that piece. That is also how I normally do filigree, as I don't have steady enough hands to use the Dremel like Evelyn has. The final piece of sculpting for the front of the shield was to make the three gems. So these gems are each going to be two layers thick, so what you can see here is Evelyn has picked a shape, in this case a sort of egg shape, and she is cutting out all of these uh, pieces, and they have been smoothed pretty rigorously with a sander, and then they are sandwiched together uh, on these smooth sides to make them as tightly bonded as possible, because they are going to be sanded into a gem shape, so it doesn't really matter what pattern was on the foam beforehand, because that's going to be sanded off. Once these have been shaped into the gems, they are then glued onto the shield, and they are not glued onto the shield first and then shaped afterward, that's just a lot harder. And now we move to the back of the shield. So what you can see Evelyn doing here is she is sanding smooth the boundary between the rim that we glued on the side and the back. You can then see me ruling out the boundaries of the wooden plank design on the back as the back is going to look like it's made from planks. And then Evelyn uses the Dremel to carve out the boundary between those planks. And a neat trick for those planks is to use an actual plank as I did. The wood grain design is then drawn on. The key with wood grain is that it's roughly parallel lines that never really meet each other. Those lines are drawn on with a knife at least 5mm deep, and then once each of those knife lines has been put in, a heat gun is then used to heat the back of the shield, which causes those knife lines to open up and widen. This works because the heat gun uh, heats the foam, the foam shrinks, and then all those knife cuts in the foam open up and you can see that that leaves quite wide wood grain marks which although it might seem exaggerated now when it comes time to paint the shield those will look really good finally for the back of the shield we are cutting out these rims of two millimeter foam these will be glued on the back of the shield on top of the boundary between the rim glued on the side and the actual back piece uh, this not only hides that seam, but it also helps to strengthen the shield and seal in the areas where we've had to fill in large gaps. Doing this section with these little raised 2mm rims isn't too difficult. Essentially, you just use the contact adhesive uh, to hold them in place while you glue them, and you just carefully roll them on. The final section for this sculpt is, of course, to make the handle. So here you can see Evelyn and I uh, drawing on where the handle will go once that has been done. We're then cutting out a series of strips to build up something that the handle will be able to rest on. Essentially what we're doing here is on either side of where the handle will go, I've built up two sort of pyramids of foam. Uh, once those are built up to about four or five layers, which is four or five centimeters, depending on how far you want your hand from the shield, uh, I then cut a channel into those where the uh, handle will go. The handle is then glued in in a sort of preliminary way. Now this wouldn't be enough to hold the handle in, but we're not done because once that handle has been glued in, the sides are then smoothed again, and once those are smoothed down, a strap of foam is glued over the top to hold that handle in place, and this makes it much stronger. And in this case we've added another layer of foam on the top, to help protect Evelyn's thumb if the shield is knocked backward into her. And now that the handle is complete, that's the whole sculpt done, and we are ready to move on to latexing. Thanks for watching, Silverfam, and see you in video two.